Hey, Heather, it's Lori. I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to God's whispers and creating one of the most powerful women's ministry that I have encountered yet so far in my walk with the Lord. You have nurtured and guided me these last few months and helped me to not only grow closer to God, but to discover freedom from 50 years of dieting and comparison. (laughs) I've also learned more about myself and excited to continue this journey and not waste another second on the idols that have filled my heart. You've also created a group coaching atmosphere that allows a safe place to speak the deepest hurts and truths, therefore also gifting me with three sister friends that I have daily contact with. Again, there are truly no words to express how deeply thankful I am for you. I pray that you can continue to reach more and more women every day who can find freedom and joy that comes from a comparison-free life. Hey there, friend. Heather Creekmore here. Lori, thank you for your story. If you want to work with me in coaching like Lori did through the spring, I have openings still, but probably not for too long. We start uh, September 12th, and I think these groups are going to be filled by the end of August, uh, if not before. So go ahead and go to comparedto.me and look for the group coaching tab and find out all the information you need. Maybe coaching is right for you, and maybe this is the right time for you if you're just done with all this stuff. And you just, you're just, to, you've tried everything and you're done. Friend, try coaching. I, I promise you that we can make a difference in how you feel about your body. And today, that, that's what we're going to talk about. In today's show, we're going to talk about being nice to your body, about befriending your body, about the ways we think and feel about our bodies and how that actually makes a difference in how our bodies work, right? What would it be like to be on the same team as your body? That might sound like a weird question, but you probably get what I'm saying. Most of us have been enemies of our bodies for many decades. That's where we're going today. I think you're going to enjoy today's show. And if you do, tell someone. (laughs) Here we go. Welcome to Compare to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compare to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. Okay, friend, today we are talking about befriending your body. Doesn't that sound strange? <laughs> but but let me kind of make this way too black and white, right? But let me make it black and white to kind of emphasize the two different sides of this, okay? So you are either friends with your body or you are an enemy of your body, right? And again, that's way too black and white. Most of us are kind of somewhere in the middle. Like there's parts of our bodies we're friendly with and there's parts of our body <laughs> that are mortal enemies, okay? But, but generally what I'm trying to drive us to today is this principle that if you're not on the same team with your body, life is going to be hard because friend, your body is your body. How's that for a brilliant statement? I know you're all going to like quote me (laughs) and memes on that, right? But your body is your body. It is the only one you have to go through this life with. And I say that not as a preface for a shaming message of, so make sure you make it hot, right? No, 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 no. That's been done way too much. And that drives me crazy, right? Instead, yes, we have to care for our bodies. But the ways we've been taught to care for our bodies may not actually have been ways to care for our bodies, let me, let me back up a little bit here and tell you exactly what I'm saying. 
My friend, I think diet culture has taught us that we are not to trust our bodies, that our bodies are the enemy. Our bodies are to be controlled, manipulated. Um, This is harsh language, so forgive me, but whipped into place, right? We're to command over our bodies. And even in Christian circles, I think sometimes this has been um, a distortion of scripture, right? Because the fruit of the spirit is self-control. And so we have used the self-control verse kind of as a permission to be um, mean or cruel to our bodies, right? In order to have self-control, I must master my flesh, And I did a great two-part episode with my friend Amy Carlson. She's a non-diet dietitian. She's an eating disorder specialist where we talked all about self-control. It happened earlier this summer. I'll try to put um, a link to that in the show notes. But go listen to that episode, my friend, because controlling the flesh is not about controlling your physical hunger. Now, it, it could be. In, in rare occasions, it could be, okay? But, but that's not what it's about mostly. Controlling the flesh is about really becoming more like Jesus. <laughs> How do I love more like Jesus? How do I squash my own desires, my own wants, my own selfishness to love others better and be more like Jesus? And that is not about not eating carbs or not eating after 7 p.m. or any of those food rules, right? It's not about self-control. So go listen to that episode. But but for today, I, I want us to remember that when the Bible's talking about the flesh, it doesn't mean our biochemistry. It doesn't mean the way our bodies were created. Okay, so let's just back up a second. I like to back up. <laughs> I feel like I say that a lot. But let's back up a second and think about how God made your body to function, right? God designed your body to function on food. Now, he didn't have to design us this way. He could have made it so we didn't need to eat. Maybe all we need was sunshine, like plants, like we could have a photosynthesis. But he didn't create us that way. He created us to eat. And then he created our bodies in a very specific way to require different kinds of nourishment for different kinds of functions. And so then he created these macronutrients. There's three macronutrients. He created fats. He created carbohydrates and he created protein, right? And different parts of our bodies need different macronutrients. If you've ever tried to do thinking activities without having carbohydrates, (laughs) you've learned the hard way that our brains need glucose. You need sugar to run the brain and that is carbohydrates, right? Our muscles need protein. Protein is the building block of our muscles, right? And fats are good for our brain. They're good for organs. They're good for protecting our bodies, right? So there's all these different specific purposes for the macronutrients in our bodies. But if you're like me, my friend, and again, no shame, no condemnation, no judgment here, okay? I'm telling you my story, and if it relates to your story, <laughs> well, you'll, you'll take more out of it, I guess. I have been mean to my body by saying, no, body, you don't need all three macronutrients. No, 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 no. Because I don't want you to look a certain way. I want you to look thinner and sleeker or whatever the word you would use, right? I want you to look like this body. So I'm going to deny you one of those macronutrients. And so, and then I'll just tell you my pattern. In college, my friends, you couldn't have paid me to eat an avocado. Like fat, that was bad, (laughs) right? Everyone was fat free. Fat free was the way to go. If you wanted your body to be fat free, you ate fat free. It didn't really work like that. Uh, Living on plain bagels is not a good way to be fat free. Um, But but that was what I believed, 
right? And then as time went on, I remember trying to be like vegan, vegetarian, because I thought protein made people fat. And so I was trying to have less protein. And then, you know, by the time I got to my 40s, I was only eating protein, right? Because carbs make people fat. And I did a great interview with Tracy Brown about bread. If you haven't listened to that one yet, even if you're gluten free for celiac or just gluten free forever, listen to that episode about bread, because Tracy said a lot of really fascinating things about why the diets that are most popular cycle through the three macronutrients. And I'll, I'll kind of summarize it, but I want you to go back and listen to that episode. The summary is like our body needs all three macronutrients. So a diet plan that leaves out carbohydrates or leaves out fat or leaves out protein can only be popular for so long because our bodies will rebel. We will have to go off of that diet because we will need the nutrient that's missing. And I don't know about you, but I thought that was fascinating. But back to befriending our bodies, what if the kindest thing to our body is to give it all three macronutrients? Whoa, like that was mind blowing to me, right? Because I had been trained by diet culture to listen more to whatever the experts told me I shouldn't be eating. But the simple truth is my body needs all of it, right? No matter what crazy theory they came up with. And, and again, we've watched it long enough to know that it'll change, right? The people that are promoting high fat now will be high carb <laughs> five years from now. We've seen these cycles. It's insanity, right? Because it's doing the same thing over and again, just different, different package. What if the nicest thing to my body is just to feed it the different macronutrients it needs? Okay, so that's, that's point one as we think about befriending our body. Point two is I want to think, I want just to think about the opposite of that. How do most of us speak to and think about our bodies? It's not in terms of friendship. Most of us shame and scold our bodies, right? Like, oh, aging, oh, another wrinkle. Oh, why is my stomach bloated? Oh, why, you know, why do my legs look like this? Oh, I've been working out so hard. Why can't it change, right? And I just wonder if shaming and scolding ourselves isn't actually making our body issues worse from a physical standpoint, right? I just wonder if being on the same team as our body, (laughs) being kind and encouraging to our body might actually get us closer to where we want to be. Now, that could sound a little bit like magical thinking mumbo jumbo, but I know for certain, my friend Aaron Carey says, a body that's stressed will not digest. So I know for stressing over every single thing we eat, right, in a stressed out state, we're not getting the nutrients we need. I also know That when we're exercising in a stressed out state, it does bad things to our adrenals, it spikes cortisol, which can give us extra weight from cortisol spikes, right? All kinds of extra bad things. That's my medical language for you today. Extra bad things. Extra bad things happen when we're stressed. And so what would it look like to stop being so stressed about our physical bodies and just kind of let them be. And as we try to engage in healthier habits, because you know you might still want to change your body, and I'm not going to tell you there's anything wrong with having that desire. That's between you and the Lord as to why you want to change your body and how you want to change your body. But I can't tell you that's a bad desire, right? But but as you follow a path towards becoming healthier or or trying to change your body in the way you want to change it, maybe becoming stronger, right? What would it be like to just be nice to your body along the path, right? And I I don't mean this to sound hokey, but you know, thank you, body, that we can take a walk. Thank you, body, that you can lift a weight. Thank you, body, that you can digest this food for me. I, I believe just like our other relationships, like parenting, for example, or friendship, I think things go better (laughs) when we are kind than when we are shaming and scolding. So that's just some food for thought there. I'll be right back with a couple more ideas after this message.
Hey friend, are you sick and tired of stressing over your body? Are you to the point where you are ready to do something? Okay, you've tried all the diets, you've tried all the wellness programs, you've tried all the exercise programs, and you still aren't comfortable in your own skin. My friend, we need to work together. Now, let me be clear, this isn't a magic pill you're gonna take. It's not another diet. But in my group coaching sessions, I try to put you on a path to freedom that you can continue to walk for the rest of your life. We have such a great time in group coaching. I bring women together and hopefully in a lot of cases, they've been able to stay friends after the group sessions are over. So you leave group coaching, not with just with a renewed sense of who you are in Christ and how to overcome your body image issues, but also with friends to walk along beside you as you continue to walk this path going forward. I hope you'll consider group coaching. If you want to know more, go to compareto.me and go to the coaching tab and you can find out all about it. Sessions start in September, so sign up soon. I know it's going to fill up. So head on over to compareto.me, look for the coaching tab and sign up today. I'm excited for the chance to work with you. So we've talked about not scolding and shaming our bodies. We've talked about treating our bodies nicely in terms of what we feed our bodies. But I'm wondering how many of us still struggle with being a perfectionist around how our bodies move and work. Maybe we're still struggling around food rules and perfectionism there. Or maybe we have really demanding expectations of ourselves when it comes to the ways we exercise our bodies. And we're kind of frustrated if our bodies won't do what we want them to do. And so I was researching this for the book I'm writing on body image, which will come out in fall 2023. It's different than compared to who. It's going to be a workbook. So it'll be all in. There's going to be plenty of words, <laughs> plenty of narrative to read, but it's going to be all in with things to do to improve your body images. And as I'm studying this, it's interesting, this concept of mind over matter that we adopted, I don't even know when, but somewhere along the line, we learned that we can tell our bodies to do or be whatever we want them to do or be. But that's just not true (laughs) biologically, right? Yeah, okay, there are some times when mind over matter applies, right? There are some times when you gotta tell yourself to get out of bed and go to work. There are times when you gotta tell yourself to get up off the couch and go for a walk, right? There is a pool there sometimes where we have to push our bodies to do something. But in general, I wonder if, and this was the research I was doing, was talking about how we have taken this little bit of truth and we've made it this big applicable kind of truth and it's not true, right? We've told ourselves that we can do anything we set our minds to. And then when you apply that to rigid eating programs or rigid fitness programs, we tell ourselves, you know, we can do whatever we it is we want to do. And too often we can get injured or maybe we eat the way we thought we needed to eat to get the body we wanted and it didn't work out. Our body didn't change the way we wanted it to change. Maybe (laughs) this used to happen to me all the time. I would lose weight, but not from any place I wanted to lose it. I would lose weight in my chest and my bra size would go down. It's like, that is not where I wanted the weight to come off. Maybe you can relate. Um, So we, we have to move away from believing that we can make our brains, make our bodies do anything we want them to do. Now, in that same vein, let me tell you that what you think does matter, right? And and I think this goes back to befriending your body. Thinking nice thoughts about your body, I think is more helpful than those scolding, shaming thoughts. 
But when we get stuck where our brains are, you know, punishing our bodies, so to speak, where we're thinking, oh, I should be able to do this. Or maybe with aging, this becomes very important, you know, where we we battle those thoughts of, "I, I wish I could still do this. I should still be able to do this. I should be able to move my body like I used to move my body. Right. And and that's not necessarily accepting of the ways that our bodies change. And I don't just mean the change of aging. I just mean the change. Like some days you just feel good. Like you can do anything. And some days you might feel tired. You might feel overwhelmed. You might feel stressed. And maybe your body wearing all of that emotional weight doesn't necessarily feel like going for a three mile run. Now, one of you is going to argue, but if you just do the run, you're going to feel so much better. And, and that might be true in some cases. This is this is also subjective. I feel like I'm putting disclaimers around everything. But generally, what I'm trying to say is listening to our bodies is something we've been taught not to do. Mind over matter said, ignore your body. Diet culture has said, who cares what you're hungry for or craving? Don't eat that if you want to be thin. All of these messages around us have told us not to listen to what our body is trying to say. And I just wonder as we evaluate these voices, right, the voices of diet culture, the voices of secularism that says we can control things (laughs) through just simply the way we think about them. If we compare that to what God says in his word about the way he made our bodies that were made in his image, right? That he designed us on purpose for a purpose, that he made us to have hunger and thirst, that he made our bodies to desire satisfaction from food. Like, doesn't that blow your mind? The, the contrast there between God made us to be satisfied by food physically and what diet culture says, which is, you know, find your satisfaction in the, <laughs> not in the real thing. Try to find satisfaction in the low fat, uh, you know, carb free alternative, right? Or don't worry about satisfaction because what matters most is how your food makes your body look. And it's just not how God designed us to relate to our bodies. So I know I've been a little all over the place today. My main coaching tip for you today is, are you okay with being kind to your body? Can you be on the same team as your body? If your body says, I'm exhausted, we need rest, will you listen to it? If your body says, I'm starving, I need meat or I need some carbs, will you listen to it? If your body says you're thirst, it's thirsty, we often respond to that one without a problem. Or can you imagine if you had to pee <laughs> telling your body, you shut up, body, you don't know what you're talking about, all right? Now, we've all had to hold it. <laughs> but generally, at some point, you're going to just go ahead and go, right? It's ridiculous. You wouldn't do that. Well, our, our need to eat and to rest. Those are the same kinds of physiological needs that we need to respond to in kindness when our body shares them with us. That's all I have for you today. I hope something today has helped you be kind, befriend your body. Because I really believe that if we're going to win the battle with our bodies, it starts by being on the same team, by recognizing that working together with what our body wants and needs is going to be a lot better way to reach our goals than trying to work against our body and what it wants and needs. Well, thanks for listening. I hope something today has helped you stop comparing and start living in private. Oh, hey there, before you go, if something from today's show blessed you, may I ask a huge favor, leave a review on your favorite platform. Seeing your five-star reviews is a huge encouragement to me. 
Not sure how to do it? You can go to compare to who.me slash podcast, scroll to the bottom, and you'll find all the information. And while you're at compare to who.me, check out some of the more than 500 articles on there about body image, comparison, all the things you're thinking about. Plus, you can find out more about my books, or you can grab a time for a free 10 minute call to see if coaching is right for you. I'm so honored to be a part of your journey out of body image and comparison frustration. And I can't wait to hear how God is working to set you free.